The continued evolution of technology touches all our lives, in particular the way we communicate. The internet is a potent force creating linkages spanning the globe. We have been gifted technology that allows text conversations with stunning immediacy and even use of the internet for overseas phone calls. The long-distance call in a world made smaller by technological advances is at times just another telephone conversation. The benefits of over-the-top services, defined as services which ride on top of networks to which customers are connected, are not without controversy. Applications or apps which provide free text messaging, voice and even video messaging to an insatiable market has left traditional telecoms service providers out in the cold. Consequently, the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, TAT, in its 21st ICT Open Forum, posed the question, should over-the-top services be regulated? Companies marketing mobile data plans and other traditional telecoms services have locked horns with a new player, OTTs or over-the-top service providers. OTT services include those now familiar smartphone apps like Viber, WhatsApp and Tango to name a few. Conventional service providers argue that OTTs use their infrastructure to deliver products which can undermine revenues from traditional voice calls and SMS text messaging services. TAT Chairman Selby Wilson explains that while this variety of communications services enhances the lives of consumers, traditional service providers see their own networks being used against them. OTT service providers are able to deal directly with end users. The network operator or internet service provider remain effectively outside of this transaction and therefore has no control over the content or the application. The introduction of long-term evolution, LTE technologies, all IP architecture will further expedite the delinking of the delivery of services from the underlying network. OTT service providers have made the case that data usage increases revenue flows of network operators. However, the question remains as to whether this revenue increase is sufficient to compensate for the loss of other revenue streams such as local and long distance voice calls. Traditional telecoms point out that OTT and VOIP or voice over IP service providers don't share the same infrastructure costs and regulatory obligations but to lure their customers away leading to falling revenues. OTT providers for their part don't perceive themselves as hijackers of the conventional business model but just another service available on the internet. While the technology genie is already out of the bottle, telecoms companies will need to work with OTTs in order to cope with billowing consumer demand for popular communications options like Skype and Facebook Messenger, among others. Embracing an all IP future solution is vital for operators if they are to retain customer relevance and have a network capable of meeting the ever-growing customer demands for data services and increasingly richer communications. For TAT Chairman Selby Wilson, the new order imposed by over-the-top services provides a unique opportunity for discussion among stakeholders. This forum represents the first time the major traditional service providers, Digicel, TSTT and Flow, have come together under one roof at an ICT open forum. In order to guide informed debate, the Telecommunications Authority compiled a detailed consultative document analyzing the issue. Executive Manager of the Policy Planning and Market Economics Division at the Authority, Annie Baldeo, points out that the OTT VOIP debate can be a minefield of technicalities. Certain aspects of OTT and VOIP can be considered public telecom services. Under the Telecommunications Act, any entity providing such services must apply for a concession from the government. But this is where it gets tricky. OTT VOIP services are offered over the internet and as such are considered internet services. The Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago does not currently regulate services provided through the web. It is a question confronting many countries, some of which have gone the extreme route of blocking OTT services on their IP networks. One possible approach is the aggressive strategy. And what this involves is the blocking of content of the OTT players. And this is not something the authority is in favor of doing at this point in time. 
this is currently the situation in the Middle East and we are seeing it present in some of our Caribbean countries such as Jamaica and Haiti. Another possible approach is a collaborative approach and that involves your local service providers partnering with your OTT VoIP players, coming up with a commercial agreement that is mutually beneficial to all. However, the disadvantage with this strategy is that will it be viewed as selective or arbitrary to target only OTT VoIP operators for such treatment or should this arrangement be required for all OTT service providers? And lastly, we have the opportunistic approach and this is the offering of premium internet packages to customers. So for example, your service providers can offer you a package, maybe at a higher price, to access VoIP services such as Viber and Skype and so forth. Right here at home, Digicel has previously blocked OTT and VOIP services. The Telecommunications Authority, however, intervened as they believe such an extreme maneuver would harm consumer interest. For Digicel's General Counsel David Gary, the challenge posed by free text, video messaging and voice calls truly revealed itself over the last two years, owed to improvements in broadband technology and the proliferation of smartphones which support apps like Viber, WhatsApp and Tango, Digicel anticipates a significant erosion of revenues on its traditional network. Voice and SMS revenues will decline by, I think, 2017 we have up there, um, by 30% uh, and 40% respectively. Uh, in India, they're talking about declines of 50% on, on revenues. A key point that um, all of the, the, well certainly in our experience and also all of the um, experts that we have uh, advising us are telling us is that um, the increase in data revenues is not going to make up the shortfall. Uh, the problem is that the, the, uh, the voice revenue and SMS part of the pie is going down. And what, yes, I mean, more people will be using data, that's true, but it isn't going to be enough to make up to where, re where uh, mobile operators are now, here or anywhere else in the world. So you're seeing a curve that's going down like this. According to Mr. Gary, the problem is particularly acute in the Caribbean, where incoming overseas calls account for a considerable portion of their revenues. Mr. Gary challenges the notion of the internet as an alternate world of unfettered freedoms, stressing that the same rules and regulations which apply in the real world are also applicable in cyberspace. The problem we have is the competition now by uh, operators that do not follow any of these rules uh, is breaking the bargain basically. If we had known that you could offer voice services in Trinidad and Tobago without investing hundreds of millions of dollars in a network and so on, you know, or indeed any of the other operators, of course we've done the same, right? Um, so this is the problem. We, we're now facing competition uh, by people who are working outside the rules. While Digicel's initial response to the impact of OTTs was to block their services, the approach of another major conventional telecoms provider is somewhat different. For TSTT, the infiltration of OTTs in their network is a reality that must be accepted. But for their acting head of regulatory and policy affairs, Crystal Leith, working towards a symbiotic relationship between OTT service providers and traditional telecommunications entities must be done on a level playing field. So for example, a Skype call that terminates on TSTT's network, we expect to get revenue from that because you're using our, your, our facility. Skype to Skype or pairing arrangements between Skype, we're not so concerned about things like that. We believe, however, that it is incumbent on a regulator to minimize regulatory imbalances. And we saw a number of those regulatory imbalances earlier. The whole long list where we had a lot of demands being placed on the telco and not so many demands being placed on the OTT. Ms. Leith says while the rapid development of communications apps creates a richer experience for the consumer, telecoms providers cannot abide what she describes as the parasitic arrangements in which OTT service providers are free of licensing fee requirements, data privacy protection obligations, quality assurance and infrastructural investment. Ms. Leith, leaning heavily on the side of regulation of OTTs, believes this is a vital component in addressing the current regulatory imbalances. The existing legislation may need to be revised, taking into consideration the existing business environment and the evolution thereof. We believe that our business models need to be revised. We believe that the local regulatory regime of authorized service providers 
must ensure that there is non-discrimination and to a significant extent the act does allow for that. I believe now it's more so a matter of enforcement and we further believe that OTT growth is largely due to a lack of regulation to date but beyond that we do not believe that telecom regulation alone is the only solution. We believe that we need to look beyond the regulatory environment in the telecom sphere and we need to consider further issues or including additional issues so that we have an entire ecosystem to properly regulate the OTT. And while regulation of this brave new world is being advanced as the most effective means of introducing balance into what some service providers consider an environment skewed in favour of over-the-top services, there is another perspective should the consumers be allowed to decide. David Cox has had the benefit of having worked with both a regulatory body and now cable and wireless communications. He questions whether the consumer could ultimately provide some resolution to this complex issue. You know, CWC has taken the position that it will not throttle or block your services. It will not charge premium prices to content providers to deliver certain services to you. But there are others that um, have a different position. Should is it possible to say, well, let the market decide between column A and column B and C? Can consumers not say, well, I want to, I don't mind that I may have to pay extra to have certain types of services on this network, versus another consumer saying, I want to work with or I want to be a customer of the provider that is transparent about its policies, doesn't want to throttle, etc., etc. What role does consumer choice play in, in this? But where are the consumers in this vexing debate? Well, many were on hand at the ICT forum to sound a warning to telecoms providers against blocking over-the-top apps which have become an indispensable part of life. There were also those who pointed to the inherent futility of trying to contain an uncontainable force. I understand that you need the money to expand and to make sure that we get a better service and so But there's a reason why people are choosing to use what you think is the poorer quality of service. Because it's free. Because I don't have to pay $900 million for it. Because I don't have to pay roaming charges. Because I don't have to pay all of these excessive services, excessive fees uh, to access simple basic communication and entertainment. The voice is dead, long live the data. Of course, if you're a company whose business model is predicated on selling voice, this must be very, very unsettling. Uh, but if, and of course, you're going to try and push back against the wave. But that's just what it is. You're pushing against the wave. And last time I tried that at Maracas, it didn't work very well. Okay? Of course, if you are a company whose business model is selling data, it's the best of times and you're interested in getting people to use as much data as possible of any type. The problem is, the big problem is, uh, on, a, on an IP network, the way I understand it, everything is OTT. And I'm glad Ms. Baldio kind of made reference to that. Not only Viber and Skype, uh, not only WhatsApp, but Facebook, Google, uh, everything, New York Times, the Express, every single thing is over the top. So what are we really going to regulate? Are we going to regulate all of them? Or are we going to just regulate the ones that challenge the local incumbents? There were other concerns about how regulation of apps using traditional networks would affect growth of the IT industry in Trinidad and Tobago. You see, my biggest concern with this is not so much the foreign over the top services provider, but the kind of precedents we set where basically anything that telecommunications, the telecom, sorry, don't like, but the, what software on the network, the telecommunications authority comes in and says, no, you can't do that. So if locals were to develop apps like the Viber and Skype and whatnot, will we be subject to these same kind of regulations? Is that where we're going to go with this? Is it that online ticketing systems, which, which people are developing, that TSCT is each, um, suggest and be regulated, are those things going to actually fall into some kind of bureaucratic process where we have to get a license to just write software? 
But even if TAT and the local telecoms were to agree on some sort of regulatory response to the OTTs, what would such a response look like? What I want to understand from the panelists is this business model of regulating OTT, or the model of regulating OTT. I want to understand how that would mechanically work that would not ultimately reduce to blocking OTT services. Skype is licensed in many countries. So they didn't have a problem applying for a license when it was required of them. In Europe, for example, Belgium and France, they have licenses there. There wouldn't be a problem getting them to, to be telling them they had to have a license here, a letter, dear Skype, here's the law, you need to have a license. Uh, I bet you they, they would respond and they would, they would engage with you. And that's how you build a system. I mean, if we sit back and do nothing and say, oh, well, you're based in Malta or Cyprus, so you don't pay any tax to anybody, nothing we can do about it, that won't get us anywhere. Even as Tat asks whether OTTs should be regulated, a question which has been given an unequivocal yes vote by major players in the telecommunications industry, the authority prefers a conciliatory approach. TAT advocates negotiations between traditional telecoms and OTT service providers to hammer out contractual arrangements which would ultimately benefit the consumer. Viber, Facebook messaging, WhatsApp and the other apps have irrevocably changed the way we communicate. The Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago is keen to see a symbiotic relationship emerge out of what is unquestionably a vexing debate on OTT and VOIP services and their impact on the telecommunications landscape. TAT's principal objective in staging its ICT Open Forum, focused on the question of regulation of over-the-top services, was to extract the opinions of all stakeholders. This is an important step in arriving at a solution which would ultimately benefit consumers and create an environment in which telecoms providers can continue to contribute to the development of Trinidad and Tobago.